All right, thank you. All right. Next question. Um, aren't, you guys, aren't you guys hungry? Like, I think it's so fun. Everyone is gone and go get a bunch, maybe. Um, all right, uh, if you'd like to keep track of your operating system or if you want to recover as soon as possible if there's any problems in your service, or even more, uh, if you want to prevent such a problem, I think you came to the right place. I'm so okay. Actually, she introduced me as Moe, uh, who is my English name, and I'm living in the States. Um, I'm from South Korea, currently working at Neighbor, your neighbor, as one of the maintainers of Project Pinpoint. Pinpoint is also an open source APM project. Um, today I will tell you about how Neighbor enhances observability with Pinpoint. Uh, and later in the session, one of my colleagues, Hangil, will give you a demo and uh, introduce you how we use Pinpoint to monitor our applications. Before we go any deeper, uh, I will introduce a little about Neighbor so that you have better understanding of this session. Has anyone heard of Neighbor? A few? Oh, uh, much more than I thought, yeah. Actually, the brand is not that much popular overseas, uh, but it's very famous in Korea. The company has revenue of 4.9 billion US dollars uh, as of last year. Over 11,000 employees are working, and almost half, the, half of them are from all over the world. Neighbor was founded on June 1999. Uh, since Google was founded on September 1998, well, Neighbor started fairly early in IT industry. Neighbor started as a search engine, uh, and currently is the biggest IT company in South Korea. And now, not only the search engine, but we develop and operate various kinds of services. I think few of them here uh, are already familiar to you, right? I think the most um, service is fine, I think, in Taiwan. Um, that, yeah. There's a video streaming service, free live. Uh, there also is a cloud platform, um, mobile application, and yeah, speakers, and so on. If we include minor or regional um, services in this list, uh, there will be almost about uh, almost 100 of them. And here comes a challenge. Uh, in order to successfully provide all these services uh, to the global users, we needed to operate with uh, high stability. And to do that, we needed extensive observability of overall system. We have an internal solution, Nello, to support block logging, um, and Pop to support matrix. And here comes the pinpoint. Um, pinpoint mainly support distributed tracing and little of both logging and metrics. Uh, we can say pinpoint is a monitoring tool that helps services operate. So with pinpoint interoperating with Nello and MPOT, uh, it greatly helps us to achieve uh, full observability. So in this session, I'll only focus on pinpoint. So we enhance observability with following features that I'm going to introduce. First one is bird eye view. This is a server map. Um, it's it's uh, shown in the first page of Bitcoin web. We gain bird eye view of your system and it makes it easy for us to understand the architecture of the system. So as you can see here, um, it, there is three applications running on top of the server, and a cache is used, and my, MySQL as a database. This is another typical example of microservice application. Um, you can see the transactions going through a API gateway that's on the left, and all the way to the database. Now, these are the simple examples to help you understand how the server man looks like. But in real world, it looks like this and it gets much complicated. And server map will be like, yeah. And even worse, like this. If you have any microservice with this complexity, um, it will be much harder to operate without this server map. Second item is about finding slow transactions. How do you guys find your slow transactions in your service? In neighbor, with Pinpoint, we can find problematic transactions in no time. This is called scatter chart. Um, each dot on the chart represents a transaction. Red dots are the transactions we 
exceptions or failures. Y axis is a response time of each transition, and the X axis is represents day and time. So if there are any dots on the top of the chart, then of course those will be, will be the slow transitions. So for example, in this application chart, these will be the slow transitions. So usually different patterns show on the scatter chart uh, for every service. Sometimes it looks like this, and it looks dirty, right? I don't even, uh, I don't have even the slightest idea where to begin to optimize this application since there are dots are all over the chart. And you can see several transactions, the dots on the top, several transactions took more than 10 seconds to respond. How about this one? What do you think? It's very clean. The chart uh, represents that applications uh, very stable. And every request responded very quickly. And now this. Is somehow it kind of looks like a tornado. Uh, I don't even have to tell you that it's a disaster, right? You can just feel it. Yeah? So I'm going to give more lots. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, the red dots represent failures like, and exceptions, right? So as you can see, there are a lot of failed transitions in the time period. Um, this was actual scatter chart, the real scatter chart that was shown during, a, during our situation in one of our applications. The team operating the service um, received alarms from pinpoint and acted quickly by restarting the instance after finding the root cause. So uh, I think that will be the rebuilding time. Uh, after taking the appropriate actions, soon the application became stable. As you can see here, the, after the rebooting time, the dots on the top has been dis disappeared. Right? For more, more details on the transaction, we have um, other statistics to complement the scatter chart, but I'm not going to go deeper into this one. Next one will be distributed tracing, um, which is one of the most important features in all the APMs. Um, since every service in neighbor is based on microservice architecture, Bitcoin is very good at this. So if we select the dot in the scatter chart, let's click and drag. The list of selected transactions and its call spec is displayed with code level information. Our engineers locate the root cause of the problem in no time with these features. Uh, and about this one, my colleague Hyunggil will get into the details later in the session. You can also check the whole flow of one transaction with the server map. So this transaction started with the user and accessed um, the database for three times. There also is a timeline feature. So for those who are much comfortable with this timeline, and they can use this one. Uh, one of the great things about Pinpoint is that we fully use it from developing space stage to the operating stage. This is real-time active thread chart of each instance. So you can monitor active threads uh, of all instances in one view. Since it's in real-time, it's also possible to be used as health check. Okay, this is the first page that you'll see on Pinpoint Web. I think you notice that UI is a little different. Um, actually, this is because uh, this, this is the second version of the UI we are preparing. Um, this is a screenshot of when we actually, um, uh, actually, um, I'm sorry. Um, this is a screenshot of when we were in the middle of deploying uh, actual real life service. Uh, we had total five instances to deploy, and each instances were brought up one by one. As you can see in the low chart on the right, uh, the total number of transactions are increasing af after each additional instance is brought up. And you can see the number of active threads are constantly changing in the five servers uh, after the deployment from the active thread chart on the below. And when the work is finished, uh, we can check the sketch chart on the right. And if there are any slow transactions and the chart looks clean, and stable, 
then we should we are sure the deployment was successful and we went to person here. This is an inspector page. Uh, you can see the matrix of the instances. There's a basic information at the top. Um, you can analyze like um, heap memories, JVM attributes, garbage collections, response time, politics, descriptor, uh, file descriptors, and so on. So these statistics also helps helps us to reduce recovery time. One of the main reasons for using microservice architecture is about scalability. And since Pinpoint is using HBase as, as a primary um, database, it's very scalable. In neighbor services are born and terminated every day basis. Um, so since Pinpoint is very flexible in scaling up and down, we can maintain the service with minimum cost. In Neighbor, uh, Pinpoint is currently monitoring about 70 billion spend chunks per day, uh, which is kind of equivalent to um, 10 billion transactions per day. Over 12,000 agents are deployed. These, this is taken um, care of with only 70 collector servers and 63 HBase region servers without causing a single problem. TPS is around 870k and currently monitoring over 1,800 applications. The most great thing is that with current architecture, Pinpoint is expected to be able to handle at least four times as much traffic as now. Since we don't have to worry about traffic growing, uh, we have more time for more beer. Yeah. APM should not have any effect on the running service. Um, since Pinpoint agent is attached to your application, and if there's any problem with the Pinpoint agent and it crashes, it may, in worst case scenarios, it may crash your service too. So our team is very sensitive with uh, stability and performance. To prevent such failures, uh, we have integration tests running every day, all, always monitoring if there are any impact on the uh, memory or the speed of running service for the new version of Agent. And I copied only the reserve running on Tomcat server. Um, we have dozens more test cases uh, running beside this technical stack. And our statistics shows that Pinpoint Agent reduces performance at maximum 3%, usually less than 1% average. Okay, since this is an open source conference, we can't skip the open source part, right? The project was started in 2012 and was open sourced on um, January 2015. So it's been around for eight years now. GitHub Startup Project Pinpoint has recently reached over 9,000 stars. And there are many significant uh, contributors in the community. This is a graph of the GitHub Star. Uh, you can see that it's continuously increasing and but the community, community is um, growing really fast. This is a global map showing regions that are using Pinpoint. As you can see, it's used all, in almost every area in the world. Actually, there's South Korea and North Korea doesn't use this. <laughs> but due to legal issues, I can't specify the name of the companies that are using Pinpoint, but a lot of world companies, uh, biggest IT companies in China, USA, Korea fully or partly uses Pinpoint. Uh, I know that several financial companies in the USA also use Pinpoint as their APM. Okay. I think yeah, Hong Kong is I think in, in fifth place. They they don't have a lot of populations, but still yeah, a lot of people in Hong Kong also use Pinpoint. So we went to the Hong Kong Officers Conference about two months ago. Okay, this is end of my part. Um, my colleague Hyunggil will take it from here and show you how, uh, show you more details on the people in technology. And if you give them a demo, right? Yeah. Uh, he's gonna show you how we how we use people to troubleshoot. Thanks, Roy. Um, so it's 2019, right? And so distributed services everywhere. Uh, it's not too uncommon um, seeing services with more than uh, tens, hundreds of servers uh, running dozens of over dozens of applications. 
nowadays. Um, is anyone running uh, services with like over 10 servers? 10 servers? One? Okay. Um, when I first started working about 10 years ago, uh, I was working on a ATM management system, um, managing ATMs all around South Korea. Uh, it was running on one Tomcat server connected to one Oracle database, right? So it was a pretty complex system, and it was pretty simple to run because it was only running on one server. But uh, it was it was a nightmare to maintain because every small code change you need to make, you have to bring down the whole system. But um, splitting up a huge system into microservices is kind of what we're heading into uh, nowadays. And um, splitting up a huge model into uh, small microservices uh, gives us a lot of flexibility in uh, development and especially deployment because we can just swap out little pieces of your applications uh, without having to bring down the whole system. But there's uh, one thing that's a that's got absolutely more difficult, and that's uh, monitoring and uh, finding out what's causing the problem in a, in a system. Um, and because you only have uh, visibility into all these different components um, of your overall architecture, because your architecture is constantly changing, um, it's always really hard to um, track all the messages that pass through all, the all these different um, components. So it's always really hard to um, track the root cause of the system. Now for the system I was working on, the AT management system before, um, all I had to do was log into my Tomcat server and just look through the, a single log file. Right? And there you can just see the root cause. But in uh, distributed systems, um, this is no longer the case. You can't just log into any server and look through the logs to find the problem. Um, so we're going to take a look at how we're going to uh, troubleshoot the problem uh, using logs traditional, in a traditional way uh, in a distributed system first. So imagine you're part of an API gateway team in an e-commerce company. Um, your architecture is working like this. Your server just it takes the API calls from the users and passes them along to the shopping API server. And one day you get a call from the CS department saying one of your APIs. So what do you do? Of course you log into your server and start looking through the logs, right? You look at your access log, you look at your Tomcat log, uh, your application log, and buried inside hundreds of thousands of lines of logs, uh, hundreds of megabytes of logs, we find this little line over here. It's saying a patch request to a shopping API server is taking a long time. So since you're an API gateway developer, you can't do anything about it. So you call the shopping team and tell them to fix their service. Now the shopping API team um, will have to find out what's wrong, like what's causing the slow. The problem, the, yeah, the problem is the shopping API server is calling the product server and order server. And now they'll have to go through their logs to find out what's wrong. But then you never know how many more servers there are behind those servers as well. And there, could be, there could be multiple databases, um, memory caches, uh, Elasticsearch servers. So it's really hard to um, point out like what caused the actual problem, like the root cause uh, in a distributed system. And looking through all the logs um, for all these servers, that's going to take a long time. So uh, troubleshooting distributed systems is hard, uh, fundamentally because there is so many components that can fail. Uh, if you have 10 times more servers, you have 10 times the chance that any one of them will fail. Right? So often in microservices, we have to embrace failures. And to work with failures, uh, we need to uh, we first bring visibility into the whole system so that uh, we know exactly all the different components that can fail. Then we need to be able to uh, track messages, uh, how these messages interact with these systems. Uh, think of them as events uh, these messages um, create. Things like uh, which methods were called, and uh, which server called which server, and so on. And finally, we need to uh, collect performance metrics and signals. So things like how long a message uh, a method took, or any exception information if there was an error. So with these, uh, we can then pick out the events that look troubling uh, based on some criteria. So these points were the basis on which pinpoint was uh, built upon. And uh, let's take a closer look at pinpoint. 
So this is server mesh. I think Roy uh, went over them briefly uh, the beginning. And as you can see, it provides the visibility of your whole uh, distributed architecture. And uh, this is all drawn uh, by data collected by Pinpoint Agent. It's not like hand drawn, or we don't have to like, configure anything. It's just all drawn automatically with the uh, data provided collected by Pinpoint Agent. So you always have an up-to-date uh, architecture diagram of your entire system uh, whenever you want. And as your service architecture constantly changes, this will just keep, keep on updating itself automatically. And so each server node here represents a logical group of application instances. So here we have uh, three Tomcat servers working together. And these edges between them show the RPC call direction and the call count of, of these RPC locations. So which server called what and uh, how many times. Uh, the response summary chart to the right uh, gives you a summary of all the requests and taken in by the front web here, so you kind of know how all the requests are performing. And here we have the uh, response time scatter chart, um, which I think Roy again uh, mentioned earlier. And if you just, uh, each one of those dot dots uh, represent uh, an individual transaction received by the front web. And if you just drag on the, on the dots there, you can see the detailed um, transaction, like all the code path that that single transaction took over multiple different servers. Now, if you look closely, um, you'll see two different color-coded uh, bars here to the left. Um, that's divided by the execute method over there. And the execute method is actually an HTTP client uh, execute method. So that's the method that makes uh, an HTTP call to a different server. Uh, those two methods here that represent the start of each of those colored areas are target receive methods. So in other words, um, you're seeing two, uh, two different call trees from two different servers in, in a single view. So all that happened in one instance of, ser of service, and all that happened in another service. You can all view what happened in a single view together. And uh, if you have more servers that, uh, that were involved, it will show all of them. And you can use this uh, distributed transaction uh, call tree to uh, find out problems that happened live then servers down the, down the dependency graph uh, pretty quickly. Um, so in order for Pinpoint to draw the server map and the, uh, the distributed call tree, uh, we need two different kinds of traces. Uh, one's call step trace, which traces everything that happens in a single server. And the other is a distributed transaction trace, which uh, combines all these different uh, call step traces into a single one if they were part of the same transaction. So we'll take a look at how call stack trace works first. So this is a call stack from a single server. And to make things simpler, we'll just focus on those three methods, how it point traces those three methods in a node. Um, so what's happening here is uh, the invoke method is calling the do get method, and the do get method is calling the demo method. And in the code level, it'll actually probably look like that. And if we inline all those method calls into a single call tree, it'll end up looking like that. And that's what we're trying to represent in the, in the district call tree of this point. And if you look closely, it's, it's got a tree-like structure, right? So pick, now pick one, all Pinpoint has to do is collect those events and somehow encode those uh, tree-like structure into those methods. And uh, one way to encode that tree-like structure is by using sequence and depth. So, so you first order those methods by sequence, 0, 1, and 2. Then if you add the depth information to that, um, you can have the depth, uh, you can draw the call tree looking like that. So having a depth of 0, 1, and 2, we'll have to split the call tree like this. And if you have a depth of 0, 1, and 1, we'll have the call tree looking like that on, on the right. So now how, how Pinpoint does, uh, does this, so how Pinpoint figures out what sequence is and what depth is, uh, we actually emulate what happens to the, the we, we emulate the method call stack. So now we have to find out when a method was entered and when a method finished um, so that they get popped up the call stack, right? And we does this by adding interceptors to uh, methods that we want to trace. And we call the before method of the interceptor uh, right in the beginning. And we call the after method right before the method returns. 
And this is all done automatically through bytecode instrumentation. So at class load time, your, your class files will be changed automatically, so you won't have to change a single line of your application code. Just attach the pinpoint agent, and it will just work. So once we add the interceptors to those three methods that you want to trace, um, the, your code will look like this, with all the inter interceptor code that are injected inside. So once we hit a before method, so once we go into a method and hit a before method, what happens to the inside the interceptor before method is we increment the sequence, uh, which starts at minute one. So we increment the sequence and push that method onto the call stack. With the, the call stack that we're trying to innovate, right? So when we hit the invoke interceptor uh, before method, um, we push the invoke method and give it a sequence of one. And then when we go into the do get method, it'll hit the do get interceptor before method, which will push the do get method event um, onto the call stack and give it a sequence of one. And then so on the same for the demo two methods uh, before interceptor. Now we have uh, three methods on the call stack with the sequence information and the depth information. The depth information, we don't have to actually keep track of it because it just comes naturally from the stack data structure. And then once we uh, finish running the demo2 method, we hit the after method. So what happens to the after method is we just copy the event of the call stack and copy it to a right here. We buffer it for sending off to the collector. And the same goes for the to get interceptors after method and the invoke met, um, method as well. And now once the, uh, call, uh, the call stack is empty, we know that the call tree has finished, right? So now we can send all those uh, events inside the right queue up to the collector uh, so that we can save it in, in page space. And now that we have information of methods we traced and the sequence and depth, uh, we can re recreate the call tree uh, using those information to be viewed in the web UI, but so just the call tree later. So the call step trace up till now was what happens in a single node. Right? We need a way to uh, stitch all those different call step traces that we gather from different uh, servers, and we need to stitch them back together into a single distributed call tree. Uh, the distributed transaction trace is what the, that uh, what does that, and um, is to find that relationship between nodes uh, connected by RPC locations, so two sides of the call tree. Um, and how Pinpoint does this is by we attach uh, trace paths to, to, to requests to the RPC locations. Uh, for HTTP, we add trace paths to the HTTP header. We inject uh, those values into the HTTP header. And so that we can propagate some information, some context, trace context over to a new, new node. Uh, these tra trace paths, um, in Pinpoint, these trace paths are consist of, we, we call them trace IDs. And we have three different values, transaction ID, span ID, and parent span ID. So the transaction ID is, is a globally unique ID for a single transaction. So every single transaction has the same um, unique ID if they're part of the same, same calls. So we can use this ID to identify all the individual call stack traces that make up the same transaction. The uh, spam ID and parent spam ID, and as you have guessed from the parent there, uh, is to encode the, uh, the tree-like structure again uh, of the distributed call tree. So now we can use those uh, tree-like structure to give the different call stack traces uh, order and sequence and structure. And so now combining both the uh, call stack traces and the distributed transaction trace, we can recreate the distributed call tree over here and draw the server map as well. Okay, so now that we have taken at how Pinpoint works internally, um, so how, how are we gonna use all this information to troubleshoot problems, right? So if you remember the our little e-commerce program from before, we're gonna use Pinpoint to try to solve, like, try to find out what went wrong in that system. Yeah. Sorry, it's kind of hard to look with. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
sorry. Uh, Wi-Fi is not working, so I, I had my tethering going on, but it seems to be not working. So uh, this is the main server map of, of our e-commerce system. Uh, as you can see, as you can probably not see, right? It's, yeah, we have an API gateway server node here called the Shopping API server. And the Shopping API server is calling the order server and the product server here. So this is kind of what our e-commerce system looks like. And as you can see, it just gives you a bird's eye view of everything. Now to find out, What's causing the delay here? Um, all we need to do is just grab all these little transactions and see what's happening inside. And hopefully it's, yeah. It's working. So all these are transactions that we just dragged on the uh, scatter chart. And if we click on one of the transactions, the call tree of that transaction, like the code that's all the distributed code paths, uh, that single transaction took will be displayed here. And all we need to do is just look at the execution time here, the self-execution self time. And just go, go scroll all the way down to the deepest level and identify whatever it was that took a long time. It looks like this one, right? Um, occurred from the, uh, cancel, I think, the order server. And it looks like a, an SQL query was slow. So if you click on like the actual SQL query here, you can see that the SQL query is sleeping for eight seconds. So now, sorry, this is for demo, so yeah. So you can you can look through the call tree and find the root cause this way, or you can just, if you're more visually inclined, you can use a timeline um, and just scroll down and look for the longest bar here and just click on it. It will just jump straight back to this uh, this, this method here. And this is a server map that shows everything the, this transaction uh, went through. So I think one of the, this um, SQL calls were slow. Okay. Yeah. So now as you've seen, all this has taken uh, less than a minute, right, if we had a faster internet connection here. Um, and compared to before, when we just had logs to work with, um, this is a huge improvement, right? And being able to monitor this new system will save you so much time that it will have time for so much beer. <laughs> if you want beer, just come talk to us after this. Anyway, um, this is exactly how we use Pinpoint to uh, monitor our applications in Naver, except that's how our API gateway looks like. Um, it wouldn't have been impossible to run our system without, uh, without a system capable of uh, distributed monitor monitoring like Pinpoint. And uh, observability is no longer optional if you're running a distributed system. Uh, you, need, you need a monitoring system that can handle uh, distributed tracing. And I think there's a lot of great solutions out there. And if you, if you want to try it out, uh, visit our GitHub and so on. And I hope this talk has given you some insight on how distributed tracing works. Um, if you want to look through the code and contribute to us PR, uh, that'd be great. And I hope you guys can find the perfect solution for your company as well. And this is about wraps up the talk. Um, follow us on Twitter if you'd like uh, to know what we're working on in the future. Uh, it will be around if anyone wants to talk about anything, uh, drink beer or whatever you want. And if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to ask. Uh, Roy and I will ask, ask you. Dash ball include in a GitHub browser. Yeah, yeah, dash ball. Yeah, everything you saw on the demo page um, is is on GitHub. So you can just clone it and then build it, or just download the binary files and just start up your your system, and it will just probably work on your system as well. Thank you. Thanks. I would like to know uh, what languages are supported by the agents. Excuse me. What are the languages supported by the agents? Oh, uh, we currently only have Java uh, available, but we I think we have PHP uh, working as well, and we're trying to expand on different languages. But it's pretty hard because Java has a uh, Python instrumentation, right? So you don't really have to change your code. But like other systems, like I think GoLang or like C plus plus. 
um, you'll have to you'll have to make an SDK, provide an SDK so that you know, users can use the SDK to uh, trace different methods, their own systems. But um, I think we're we're working on the SDK, but we currently only, only support Java and PHP and no JS. We just got no JS support. So do you plan to support Python at some point? Uh, Python, uh, we would love to, but um, none of us are really like, fancy, like really good at Python. So if we had a great Python developer, please come join us for <laughs> 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 Okay, it's a great place to work, so. Hello. Uh, I miss, uh, hello. Uh, Hi. Uh, I saw this ping, ping point is the uh, most size. Best uh, APN system I saw. Mm, it's nice for UI and US. But my question is does the uh, pinpoint support the uh, alarm, alarm or alerting? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we don't, we have APIs open for uh, alarms. But the reason why we didn't hard code the alarm system in was because everyone's alarm system is different. Right? Like some use some other mail servers or some use like you know, message SMS alarms, or some use Slack. Yeah. So we just had like have interfaces available um, and a guide to implement the alarm system. So I think that's that's as far as we're gonna support. But if you like to use the alarm interface to see your own uh, alarm system, then you can just code it and then just code it, code the interface, and it will just work. I think. Okay. Uh, to supplement the your question, actually the alarm. Feature is going to be implemented. The default feature is going to be implemented. Oh, yeah, release one point nine, so it will, it will be easy for you to use. Okay. Hopefully, yeah. One point nine one. Now this next release. So. How? Oh. Where? Oh, no, it's in your pocket. I'm very surprised that uh, we don't need to uh, write annotation to work with um, Bitcoin. So I'm kind of surprised that uh, how do you uh, know which kind of trip particle you need to uh, lock it and mm -hmm. what is the mechanism behind it? Um, we, we can't obviously, we can't log like trace every single method calls because then there'd be too much noise, right? Like if you look at the call stack trace, it's huge, right? Um, so we pick out like certain methods that we find would be important for users to know. Uh, those methods would be like public methods that users call. Um, we try to trace those and limit trace to those methods. So we have plugins with different libraries, right? So say for if you want to support Tomcat, uh, we have a Tomcat plugin for that. And all we need to do is pick out some classes and methods that we want to trace. And uh, we implement the intersection, so the before method and the after method. We just implement that and it will trace those methods. But uh, we don't actually have a set standard um, to pick out which method that we trace. It's to, we, just, it's, we just leave that up to the plugin developers because they probably know the best, the library the best, to know that which method would be the most useful to trace. But um, now that you bring up the annotation, uh, we, we're trying to add, as a part of the SDK, uh, we're trying to add a like, uh, add trace annotation so you know, users can easily just add an annotation to uh, trace whatever method they want. Right now, if, they, if users want to trace uh, custom methods, uh, we have a configuration file for each agent, and they can um, code in the fully qualified class name dot method that they want to trace. So if you add that way, then Bitcoin will trace those custom methods as well. But by default, um, we trace those methods provided by plugins, different plugins. Thank you very much. Thank you. When uh, let's thank uh, Sean, Sean and Roy, okay. And uh, if you if you have any question, can come here and talk to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.